What's happening everybody, the poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. And today's video has been some time in the making. I'm really excited about this one because this is the HP Omen 30L. So if you saw my video series from a year ago, I basically tore this down, uh, told you the ins and outs, the good, the bad, the ugly, all that stuff. And then HP, um, out of their own fruition, decided to come back to me and say, hey, we took your advice to the engineering team and we're gonna work on something, something better. So little did I know, uh, as time passes, they create this, the HP Omen 45L. And if you look at my video series, you'll see that every single thing that I address with this machine here, still a good product, you know, had its flaws, definitely, but they fixed in the 45L. So let's get into some of the initial differences. And then in this video, I'm gonna go through everything that I think is good and bad about the HP Omen 45L. So let's get into it. Now, first off, when it comes to servicing a PC, this doesn't get easier with the 30L. It was just a button in the back, pushes open, this comes off. Perfect. But that's kind of where things stopped. They continued this trend with the 45L, but here, if you wanted to actually access something like this, replace the cooler, which is what I did for the 30L, uh, because their stock 120 millimeter cooler for this uh, 10900K at the time was not cutting it. Let's just unplug that right now. So I replaced it with the Arctic 120 millimeter and it actually solved the thermal and noise issues. All right. That was the big, big drawback of this machine, the 30L. This one came with an RTX 3080. The GPU cooled perfectly fine for the most part. Could have been better based on the airflow of this case and because of, you know, it's kind of a cramp case overall, but let's move on. Now the back here, uh, you're not accessing it very easily. There's like a screw somewhere that's really tiny that you have to find and undo. And I, I honestly forgot where it is because you can't see it. It's not easy to open this back up. I think it was like down here or, or under the case or something weird. And then when you did, there was like, literally this much space to do anything and you can't see the back of the CPU. So replacing the cooler, I mean, I had to take out the entire motherboard. So when you're doing that type of thing, pulling out an entire motherboard, basically you're having to disconnect all these cables and everything. It was just very, very time consuming. And then this uh, cooler had to have its own back plate, which is basically why you have to remove the, the motherboard to get to the back of it. Their stock back plate was glued on there. So I had to rip it off and I honestly thought I killed the system in doing it. It just was not easy. Horrible experience. So that's enough for the 30L. Let's get into the 45L. Watch my, watch my YouTube video on the 30L though. Overall, I kind of liked it. Okay, so getting straight to the 45L here. In order to open up this front panel, they kept it nice and easy. So 30L, remember, it was just a button in the back. Right now it's a button right there. Boom. Comes right off. So you see a lot of PC hardware right here. We have a HyperX mouse, HyperX mouse pad, the HyperX keyboard right here, HP Omen 27C monitor, and of course the 45L by Omen. So uh, HyperX and Omen sent me all this stuff so I could do a thorough review. Oh, and some headphones too, HyperX headphones. Um, I've done a lot of videos on TikTok with a lot of the peripherals here. So feel free to check out my TikTok. If you guys want me to do a more thorough YouTube review on the peripherals, I will do that as well. Um, I'm going to definitely do a separate video on this HP Omen 27C monitor. It's impressive. It has some really cool features. Um, I did a couple of videos on the HP Omen 27i. Um, it's the flat panel. This one is the curve. So separate videos for those because it's, it's warranted. This machine right here, the 45L, uh, I know I'm talking too much, so let's get into the aspects that they definitely improved. So for one, we saw the opening of the, the panel right here, perfectly fine. What's cooling this is different than the 30L. So the 30L did have that 120 millimeter AIO that was basically smacked right here up top, trying to cool a 10900K. So now what they did is add this cryo chamber here. And it's a concept that I've actually done in many builds before. Let me show you. So right here, this is Frank. I call it Frank Einstein. N is the middle initial. 
So what I'm doing here is an external radiator with a pump res combo on here, cooling the GPU. Now, because it's external, it's actually having the benefit of all this cooler room air going directly through the radiator, cooling the fluid inside, which is then cooling the GPU inside the PC case. So it doesn't matter how hot the GPU is actually getting, all that hot air, all that, you know, all the thermals are just being, you know, thrown outside of the case and letting everything else inside of this case stay cooler, unaffected by the hot air from the GPU. So the 45L kind of did that, but different. So what you're seeing here is with their AIO that's cooling the 12900K processor, these tubes are going straight up into here, into the cryo chamber. This is allowing for all of this space right here, this air to come through and be exhausted as hot air up top. This is so nice. And not only is this uh, kind of flexible in terms of the different size AIOs, because you can just take this off, unscrew the top here, and you can change it from a 240 to a 360 millimeter AIO. You have some flexibility in terms of the sizes for this because you will be able to purchase this case separately. Um, you can also do this as custom water cooling. So I'll put some info in the comments below, but there's a particular size limit for tubing that you can use for this. But yes, you can have a separate radiator with fans on here and then a traditional CPU water block if you wanna do custom water cooling in this case. The motherboard here is definitely something that when you get a first look at it, you may say, eh, that's not the best looking motherboard at all. And yeah, you might be correct on that because HP is still using their own proprietary BIOS. So it's a bit of a headache to do a few things in the BIOS. But the VRMs uh, in terms of their cooling are much better than what they were on the 30L. So they did improve upon that. I do hope that in the next version, they do away with this proprietary motherboard BIOS stuff and then just give you like a straight up Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, you know, some brand name motherboard. Even if the price is a little bit more, this would make it so much better of a PC. Now, some of you may be asking, well, what's really the difference? If the PC is working the way that you want it to work, what does a motherboard actually do that would change anything? Well, for a lot of people, honestly, nothing whatsoever. Um, as long as the PC is turning on, things are running fine, the PC is running relatively quiet and cool, uh, you could be using this thing for three, four, five years, six years, and not even have any care whatsoever because the motherboard is the way it is. For the more enthusiastic PC users, you're going to have an issue. The first time you get into that BIOS, you're gonna be like, what is this? Um, so there's no reason in showing it in this video because it works perfectly fine, right? There's really only the enthusiasts out there that are gonna to wanna to do some serious overclocking, mess around with settings, get things the way that they want to. If you're that type of person, my recommendation is when you buy this, before you even turn it on, just replace the motherboard. And if you're that type of person, you probably have a closet full of motherboards like I do anyway. So not a big deal whatsoever. So a reason why you may want to replace the motherboard with something of your liking is because of the back IO. This does have uh, gigabit ethernet right here. So that's perfectly normal and fine. Uh, some audio, two USB A's right here, USB C, two more USB A's and then USB C. So for most people, that's honestly perfectly fine. But for other people, you may say, I, I need more than that. So you may notice that there's no Wi-Fi right there, right? Well, that's because the Wi-Fi is actually on the motherboard. It's down here, it's right there. That little card right there, that's the Wi-Fi uh, device. And it's not bad. It's actually Wi-Fi 6 AX201 uh, right there. And when I was downloading Star Citizen, it was getting the full speeds. So, so I'm downloading World of Warships right now from Steam and getting over 100 megabytes per second speeds. So that's quite nice. It is Wi-Fi 6, the AX201 uh, right here, so 168 megahertz. And yeah, I'm, I'm loving the speeds. I've had no issues whatsoever with the Wi-Fi for the HP Omen 45L. HP Omen is using a basic style of 3090, so it's compatible with a lot of water blocks. So just do your own research, but I've put two water blocks on the HP Omen GPUs. And this does have uh, two HDMI's and two display ports in the back here. So very capable uh, 3090. So the Omen 45L, I have to say, uh, if you read like their marketing material on this case, they really prided themselves on the fact that this is serviceable. Like you can get in this case and do what you want. And I really, really appreciate that. It was a big focus on their marketing material, yes, but it's, 
It's more of a how-to manual. Press the button, boom. Full access to everything that you're gonna need. So your whole like hub right here for the RGB and fans. This plate comes right off so you can access the back of the CPU, which is wonderful. You have spots right here. A little dusty. It's been dusty here. I had uh, some construction done. <laughs> and um, so you can put hard drives right here, SSD drives and, and um, hard disk drives down here as well. It's very, very well done. Cable management is done. You know, I don't really have any complaints. It is better than the 30L. I will say that. 30L, they didn't give themselves much space. This is a lot more space. Even though it looks thin, it is kind of thin. It's a lot more space than what the 30L had. So yeah, thumbs up. On the bottom right here, there is a magnetic uh, filter for the bottom. So that's actually helping the uh, PSU right there. And there's one kind of, uh, you can't really take it off, but there is a filter right here underneath the hard drive tray. So it's a little awkward. Um, dust is building up on this hard drive tray, so you're gonna have to go in and actually clean this manually. These do just pop right out though. Very well done. So I know a common question when I review pre-built PCs is, but can it play Crisis? Well, nobody plays Crisis anymore. People are playing Star Citizen, which in my opinion is the new Crisis. Crisis is a game in alpha. It's not optimized whatsoever. The graphics look beautiful. It's a massive multiplayer type of game. So yeah, it melts systems basically. If it can play Crisis, <clears throat> Star Citizen, it can play anything. So let's load up Star Citizen right now. Uh, I'm gonna do this backwards. Jeez, that's not easy doing it like this. I don't recommend it. But yeah, Star Citizen is a, a game that I've actually fallen in love with. It's the main game that I play. So I look forward to testing PCs now and laptops to see if it can even play Star Citizen. Since I want to monitor thermals, I'm also going to put the case back on. There we go. And we're going to get into the verse. So there's a way to see your FPS. So it's, you hit the tilde key, then it's R underscore uh, display info space one. There's other ways too, but so that does it then up here. It's actually showing I'm at 48, 49 FPS. Not, not too bad. So let's uh, start moving around and see what this actually drops to. So there's a way to see your character. And I'm looking at my character, still around 38, 39, 40 FPS. So this is, this is respectable. Let's find a ship to get into real quick. I don't even know where I am. And uh, are there any ships here? There's one ship, what is this? Constellation Phoenix, the emerald one. So right now in the elevator, we're at 65 FPS, which is very nice and high. And so there's my ship, getting closer and closer to it. There we go. So I'm at a random space station somewhere, and this is my Constellation Phoenix. Uh, a, if you're into Star Citizen, this is the Emerald ver version called the Fortuna. And we'll just kind of go right and get into the ship. So at 48 FPS, very 50 FPS, very respectable so far. And there we go, elevator's coming down. So let's take a tour of the ship. So this is the bridge, obviously. We have two gunner seats, top and bottom. Uh, we have the lounge area, beds. And then this is more of like the luxury style. So a little bit of choppiness here and there. But this is one bedroom, a little fish tank. No fish though. We have another bedroom, so we're at 57 FPS, another bedroom, kind of opposite style. 
lounge chairs, more lounge chairs for your, for your guests on the ship. This ship does have a big fish tank here and a jacuzzi. Very nice, right? Uh, across the hall here, this is the master suite. And we are now at 55 F FPS. And you can see the station out here. And this is all real time. So if other ships were flying around here, we would see it straight from the window here. Uh, we have a nice little table to eat and meet. And of course, a bar to enjoy all these drinks. So right now, this is not too bad at all. Uh, back here in the Constellation Phoenix, we do have what's called a snub craft. And so it's a little spaceship that you can get in. You kind of saw it when I was first walking up to the ship. And then down here, we have the cargo area. So we can drop down. And when you buy cargo, it fills this area up. So let's go back up and take off. So very nice, pretty smooth for the very first time running the game. And so this is what the ship actually looks like from the outside. FPS dropped to about 45 FPS. So this is Hardware Info 64. I'm curious to know what the thermals were while playing the game. So the CPU package, it maxed out at 81 degrees Celsius. Core max was 84 degrees Celsius. The PC was perfectly silent. I couldn't hear anything. The mic is right here. So that's a, a very good sign. And the GPU, let's scroll all the way down to the GPU. It tends to be at the bottom for, for this. Here we go. Oops. GPU maxed out at 75 degrees Celsius. And it was quiet. Memory junction was at 86 degrees Celsius. So very quiet running system for running a demanding game at like Star Citizen. Not bad. Now, being able to run Star Citizen at 50, 60 FPS is a feat. It takes a lot to do that. 12900K processor, 64 gigs of RAM, uh, RTX 3090. You can hit those high numbers for a game like Star Citizen. So if it's getting 50, 60 FPS in Star Citizen, if you're playing like Fortnite, Apex Legends, CSGO, uh, Counter-Strike, you're going to do extremely well with a machine like this because of how powerful it actually is and able to run Star Citizen at a high FPS. Relatively high compared to those games, right? Now, this is 3 Mark Time Spy. So this is gonna give me a score of how well the CPU and the GPU has done. And you can actually download this on the Steam website if you wanna do that, and kind of compare your scores to see if, in terms of a gaming benchmark, is this crushing your current PC or is your current PC the same or obviously beating it? So. This, again, 12 900K processor, 64 gigs of RAM, RTX 3090. Questionable motherboard. You may want to replace the motherboard if you purchase this, in my opinion, if you're an enthusiast. If you're not an enthusiast, motherboard's perfectly fine. So it's coming up with scores right now. This is actually telling me that it scored 18,000 on TimeSpy. So this, the graphics score was 19,000 and the CPU score was 13,800. So it's saying at 1440p, Battlefield 5 would play at 175 plus FPS. I, th I think you're good. I think you're good with this type of machine. Um, this will also tell me other games as well. So uh, let's see here. Fortnite, calculating 150 plus FPS. Not too bad. And this is 1440p. Red Dead Redemption, 75 plus FPS. Very good for that game as well. And then uh, let's do one more game, uh, Apex Legends, 140 FPS. I think there was another one here, GTA 5, 105 FPS, GTA 5. And this is all 1440p, right? So yeah, I think the system's gonna be perfectly fine for gaming. So we're running Firestrike Extreme right now, just reset hardware info 64. We're gonna see what score we get and the temperatures. So it just finished its run of Firestrike Extreme and it has a score of 22,749. The graphics score itself was 23,208 and the physics score was 40,000 even. Combined score is at 12,674. So again, it's saying like Battlefield 5 uh, at 1440p, you're getting 155 FPS. Uh, for Fortnite at 1440p, 135 FPS. So doing very well. 
And let's go ahead and compare the results online to give you some context if you haven't ran this before. And this is actually saying for Five Strike Extreme, it's ranked in the top 98 percentile of this category. So it ran quietly. Microphone right here. So this is an impressive system. Their cryo chamber is actually uh, effective. It would be somewhat interesting to see, you know, the difference between like this exact AIO setup and not having a cryo chamber. But the end result is whether it's a gimmick or not, it's been a quiet running system while playing these games, while running these benchmarks. And um, I have little to complain about, about thermals. Now, depending on your environment, I'm in Los Angeles. Yes, there's been days where it's been 90 plus degrees. So this is gonna run warmer. And uh, of course, winter environments, you know, it's gonna run a little bit cooler. So overall, if it's not screaming at me like the 30L did, the previous version, I'm happy. So let's do a little conclusion here because um, yeah, this HP Omen 45L is a big upgrade from the HP Omen 30L. The 30L had issues. It was loud, it sounded like a vacuum cleaner. I even did a video showing like I was cooking something on top of it uh, because of how much airflow was coming out of it that was hot. Um, that's because it was a 10900K trying to be cooled by a 120 millimeter AIO. It wasn't working out too well. Now, not all AIOs are the same. I replaced it with an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 120 millimeter AIO, and that solved all of that issues. No more thermal throttling, so I'll go ahead and like, maybe I'll do a link of the video up here or something like that. No more thermal throttling, no more loud noises, it just solved the temperatures, period. So not all 120 millimeter AIOs are created equally. This particular machine has a 240 millimeter AIO that is cooling this 12900K, perfectly fine, all right? So no thermal throttling while running these benchmarks. Uh, you know, this was a Fire Strike Extreme, decent score, top 98 percentile, and the PC was quiet. So this is just the raw data, the facts, the opinion, that's up to you. My opinion, I like the style, I will say that. So if you want to see a how-to on basically removing this AIO and putting on another one, let me know in the comments. I don't see a need to replace this AIO with a third party one right now, unless you just want to do it for looks. Perfectly fine. Or potentially added performance. Perfectly fine. Just pay attention to the size dimensions right here to make sure you're getting an AIO that actually fits this. It'll fit a 120, 240, 280, no problem whatsoever, but pay attention to the thickness for the radiator and the fans altogether. And then the tubing right here, the tubes have to fit down into here as well. So make sure you're not getting an AIO that's dumb thick with its tubing as well. Okay. Uh, other than that, let me know in the comment section what comments you guys have. Thank you very much for this journey. Shout out to HP Omen and HyperX for the setup to allow me to review this. More videos to come on this as well on TikTok. And um, let me know if you have additional comments, questions, concerns, all that good stuff and uh, hit up with me on uh, Twitter, and I may be doing a giveaway soon for AIOs. I have AIOs laying around left and right. So um, yeah, stay, stay up to date on my Twitter for that. Uh, other than that, peace and hair grease and all that good stuff. Ciao. Ha.